Tonight we're going to cover Genesis 1 and 2, which are the beginning not only of the universe, but of life. We're going to call this the law of creation because, as you're going to see, the most important law or the most widespread law that we have in science is the law of creation. And it took place, interestingly enough, in these portions of Scripture that are most despised by science as being historically and scientifically correct. And yet that is the source of our principal laws of science. In the beginning, we're going to begin with the beginning of the creation. Like we said, total silence. Nothing. No particles. No light. Total darkness. And some of you have experienced a little bit of that when you're in a cave and they turn off all the lights. And no longer, no matter how long you sit there, your eyes never get acquainted to it because there's nothing to see. There's no light. Now you can smell the cave. You can hear the people talking. But if everyone goes silent, you start to lose that. But in this case, there's no smell or anything. So in the beginning it says in Genesis 1.1, it doesn't tell us anything about before that, but we know somewhat what it would be like. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This is the beginning. What he's doing here, it describes, and it uses a term to create that is only used in the scriptures of God. It's never used of men. It can be two things, either bringing something out of nothing, which is unnatural, because the universe never does it, and nothing in the universe does it. Or it means to take things and mold them. It's a term bara, to mold and form things, and yet you, the creator, don't lose any energy in doing the process, and you don't lose any order yourself, which no, nothing in the, in the physical universe can do either of these functions, bring something out of nothing, or then fashion it without losing part of themselves or using another energy supply, which also degradates the universe. So in the beginning, he calls into being this matter and energy. In the first day of creation, the earth was without form and void. In other words, he's called into being matter. But as we're going to see, this matter is at probably absolute zero because you have no light and it's without shape or form. Absolute zero, we can get very close to it. No one's ever been able to get right up to it. But we know that there's no light, no life, or anything. In fact, deep space about us is at 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. And there's nothing there except this low frequency electromagnetic uh, microwaves. He brings it into being. It's without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay, into this amorphous matter, probably at absolute zero, he calls into being this and it, and, it, and it appears. And people say, how can you have light without stars and everything? Have you ever looked at a nebula? That's the aftermath of an explosion of a star or a galaxy. And they glow out there. But there's no center to the things. But it's light. He's divided into day and night. And so there was an evening and a morning the first day. Let there be light. I took the uh, reflection uh, nebula here to give you a, a deal of where you have darkness and then one light shining through it, as if this was the creation of new light. It's difficult to conceive of the things that we're seeing, reading in Genesis. So we have to take what we do see and give you a short, uh, a small example of what it would be like. The second day of creation. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. In other words, this is kind of amorphous deal of evidently like waters. 
and he puts a firmament in the middle of it and let it divide the waters from the waters. You've got two sections of water divided by a firmament. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. So we got orientation now. There's some under, a firmament, and then there are waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So there was an evening and a morning the second day. You notice the order here is um, inverted. We always have a morning and an evening. But even in the Jewish celebration of days, they begin at 6 o'clock in the evening. The Sabbath begins on, Saturday, on Friday at 6 o'clock. They keep the order. So it's an evening and a morning, one day. This is the second day. I took a picture here. It's a little bit difficult to conceive of what this firmament is, but it's the heavens, the atmosphere, and above it you've got waters, and below it you've got waters. These, of course, are just clouds, but it would be above the atmosphere. Uh, you would have the waters above. Third day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens, now he's taking the waters that are below the firmament and that are gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. You're going to see in here this term good or very good used. Do you know what it means? It means it's perfect. You have perfection at the beginning. Now, you remember Dr. Winhauser explained that in these two concepts that we have, the naturalism has nothing and then everything that appears out of it, okay? It's going up in order. In the creationist point of view, you have a perfectness that's created and it's going to go the other way. Not the nothingness, but to disorder. But at the very beginning, it's good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And so it was. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seeds according to its kind, and the tree yields fruit whose seed is according to its kind. You see the species in here that God's giving to things? He makes everything according to its kind. We get distinct species. And then you don't cross over those. But this is the third day, and God saw that it was good. So it was an evening and a morning the third day. Isn't that beautiful? God called the dry land earth. See it appearing out of the water? Let the earth bring forth the herb. The earth brought forth sea, uh, grass, herb, and the tree. Fourth day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons, for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And, it was, and God saw that it was, again, good, very good. So the evening and the morning was the fourth day. Isn't this beautiful? Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. Your life's the amount of power for that is, that it would take to create something like that. Just, we live off just a remnant of what our sun produces, which is a star in, in essence. But look at this, isn't it? And to do it, not just to bring them into being, <coughs> with this tremendous power, but with this beauty that's attached to it. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Isn't that beautiful? Colors. 
Then God said, this is the fifth day. Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly across the earth, across the face of the firmament of the heavens. In other words, you've got the sea creatures in the water and you have in the air flying across the face or the lower side of this firmament, birds. And God, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves and which, with which the waters abound according to their kind again. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Again, good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So it was an evening and a morning was the fifth day. So God created the great sea creatures. These are two uh, whales. Um, and they're, a whale is an amazing animal because it's a mammal. It breathes air. And some of them get up to 200 tons running through the water at 30 miles an hour. Unbelievable. So God created every winged bird. This is the sixth day of creation. 